Akami too grew up as a lonely boy because of his father's womanizing ways. And he vowed to be different from his father so he avoided all women and decided to become a monk. Unfortunately, he accidentally joins the all-female Mikuzuki shrine run by Priestess Yuzuki and her family after he discovers that his father owes them a ton of money. Now he must help support Yuzuki as she tries to save her shrine from closure due to its lack of a head priest. A man named Kijo from a neighboring temple has agreed to marry Yuzuki to help save her shrine, but she must first pass the Tokudo, an intense test for monks and priestesses. Dead priestess Kiki helps to train Yuzuki alongside Akamitsu and Mia, another girl who lives in the shrine. To start their training, the three of them are shocked when Kiki tells them they must change their undergarments to be white, to reflect the purity of their future training. The next part of their training is to be able to sit in absolute silence and stillness for hours, and if they move Kiki will whack them with her stick. This sort of training called Zazen is a major reason for why Akamitsu decided to become a monk, but unfortunately he keeps getting distracted when his training partners get hit, which eventually makes him fail as well. Afterwards Kiki makes them practice calligraphy, where Akamitsu is unusually skilled at the task due to prior training. Unfortunately, Yuzuki proves to be pretty terrible at calligraphy, and Mia knocks a bunch of ink on him which only prompts Yuzuki to beat him up. Nia and Akamitsu later apologize for slowing down Yuzuki's training at the mall, where they buy supplies to help them train. They encourage Yuzuki, but the three of them are all furious to find out Kiki wants them all to sleep together in one room. Akamitsu comes up with a strategy of wrapping themselves up to avoid any problems. Meanwhile, Kiki is worried about Kijo and his plans as she senses there might be some trouble with the Tokudo itself. She thinks their shrine might need to cheat to win. But the next morning she finds that her three trainees didn't manage to get any sleep, so she gives them a reward. But the reward also happens to be a trip to the mixed bath. Kiki tells them it is also part of the training, as they must fortify their mind against any disturbing thoughts about the opposite gender. Although they fail at first, and they only grow more embarrassed talking about their training with each other so far. They are eventually encouraged by Yuzuki who pretends to successfully resist any temptation towards Akamitsu, even though she has started growing feelings for him. As time passes, Kiki starts to determine their training is improving so she decides to give them the afternoon off. But she also gives them the cryptic advice of setting aside fame and fortune. Izuki tells the others that this is also a test, and resting is critical to achieving enlightenment. Unfortunately for Akamitsu, the day off happens to be on Christmas Eve which is particularly traumatic for him due to his father's womanizing ways. Izuki decides to take him into town for Christmas Eve to cheer him up, but he panics because of the connotations of a couple going out together on Christmas Eve. He tries his hardest not to enjoy the holiday, but he still ends up having fun with Yuzuki anyway and fails. Later the two of them head to a shop for prayer beads run by Yuzuki's friend Mary. Mary decides to offer them couple prayer beads, which are often used by couples in Buddhist weddings because she confuses them to be dating. After they clear up the confusion, she reminds them that they happen to be out together on Christmas Eve, and Yuzuki quickly realizes the connotations. After they leave the shop in embarrassment, the two of them comfort each other with Akamitsu appreciating Yuzuki's attempt to cheer him up. Meanwhile at the shrine, Yuzuki's sisters Tsukuyo and Kurage are making fun of Mia. Because when Akamitsu first arrived at the shrine she was very hostile to him, but has now significantly become warmer with the monk. Mia's friend Kagura tells them they have all changed as a result of him arriving at the shrine. But secretly, she plots to get rid of him. The next day the whole shrine has a party to celebrate Christmas, although since they are a shrine they just call it an end of the year party. Akamitsu cooks a huge feast as well as getting a present for Yuzuki, and he quickly succeeds in impressing the members of the shrine with his fantastic cooking. After they finish eating, Yuzuki suggests they give out presents which makes him nervous because he has never experienced a Christmas before. The girls later tell him that he can't donate his organs for money as a gift to them either. To replace his gift, they decide he will owe the person who gets his present one favor. When they open their presents, Kurage gets gloves from Tsukuyo. Tsukuyo gets a vibrating toy from Yuzuki, who did not understand her present. Yuzuki gets a paper for marriage registration with Kurage's name, clearly intended for Akamitsu and the rest of them end up getting their own gifts, so Kagura suggests they all trade, giving him a CD of illicit photos she took of Mia. But Yuzuki quickly threatens Akamitsu to hand the CD over to her. Meanwhile, Kagura reveals the CD was a joke and she actually gives them all tickets to a mixed bath nearby. That night Akamitsu joins Yuzuki in praying to celebrate the closing of the festivities, and she thanks him for all his work these past few months to support the shrine. This has made all of them happier, which hasn't happened since her parents died, and they give each other Christmas presents. Embarrassingly, they ended up giving each other the couple prayer beads from Mary's shop, 
but grow embarrassed when they realize the connotations. Suddenly, Kiki arrives with troubling news about the Tokudo. She tells them that the main ceremony will be held in the main hall of the Mikusuki temple, and that the leading members of the sect will be in attendance. But this will be hugely problematic for them, because of the terrible state of the shrine's central figure. Still worried about the broken figure, they end up going with Kagura to the hot springs, where all the staff seem to be suspiciously obedient towards Kagura. A staff member points Akamitsu towards a personal spring prepared for him, and then suspiciously makes him drink something. Meanwhile, the girls enjoy the hot spring together while Kagura prepares their rooms. Nia talks about how helpful Kagura has been towards her ever since Mia ran away from her family, as she has always been helping and supporting Mia, and been her best friend since childhood. Secretly, Akamitsu is stuck hiding nearby since he was tricked by the staff members into entering the female side of the bath. He attempts to hide but is quickly spotted by an arriving Kagura who begins to question the others on what their reaction would be if Akamitsu was hiding from them, and was also in the bath. Faced with this hypothetical situation, the girls would prefer he reveal himself and apologize, which prompts Akamitsu to do just that. The girls quickly punish him but also appreciate his honesty and his attempts to clear up the misunderstanding. Kagura is annoyed that the situation didn't end up so bad, so she starts another plan telling the rest of them to leave white Akamitsu stays at the hotel. Meanwhile, Mia decides to stay at the hotel too. Later while relaxing in his private room at the hotel, Akamitsu is shocked when Kagura ambushes him and tries to seduce him. He resists her by punching himself to remove his worldly desires to achieve enlightenment. Meanwhile, Kagura reveals that she had set up this whole situation to get him to leave the temple, because he is an annoying pest getting in the way of her plans, which happens to be corrupting her best friend Mia so that she can return back to her family. Akamitsu knows how much Mia hates her family and their lifestyle so he becomes offended that her best friend seemingly is betraying her, but suddenly Mia arrives as well. Kagura then uses hypnosis to knock out both Mia and Akamitsu. Akamitsu wakes up imprisoned by her, and she reveals herself to be part of the Baldwin family, a family of retainers that serve the Mia's family the Kristoffs and will do everything she can to return Mia back to her family. Akamitsu tries to defend his friend, but Kagura questions his motives at the shrine and tells him he is a distraction to the rest of the shrine. In exchange for him leaving the shrine, she will provide a donation large enough to save the shrine at the cost of him leaving and never returning. After he is freed by her the next day, Akamitsu struggles with Kagura's offer. He joins the rest of the shrine in mochi making, but when he tries to do a good job he becomes disturbed by weird comments Kurage makes about the mochi making process. This distracts him so he doesn't make very good mochi. He later tries to reprimand Kurage, but this doesn't work since she wasn't really joking and was trying to flirt with him. Afterwards, Mir arrives to help with mochi making while dressed in a bunny suit to commemorate the importance of rabbits with the moon, and she gets Akamitsu's help while the two of them are videotaped by Kagura. Meanwhile, only Kurage seems to be wearing a normal costume. Yuzuki arrives to scold them, and he discovers the costumes were all a plan by Kagura to still get him kicked out of the temple. That night Akamitsu is having dinner with everyone when Kiki is missing. After finding out she is drinking outside he decides to bring her some dinner. She compliments his cooking skill and invites him to sit with her, and admire the natural beauty of the shrine. She warns him again about the state of the temple's central figure, but tells him that the Tokudo is not the end goal for Yuzuki and the shrine. One day, Yuzuki will eventually become the head priestess of the shrine, and Akamitsu should start thinking about his role in the future. She gives him hints that he should stay to support Yuzuki, and that she will need someone like him to help her with the shrine in the future. Later all of them celebrate the New Year festivities, as they all go to a Shinto shrine to make wishes. At first Akamitsu and Mia wonders if they should hide their identities because they are from a Buddhist shrine, but Yuzuki tells them not to worry. Akamitsu finds Kurage making a wish, but she scolds him for trying to discover the wish of a grown woman, but then she gets distracted by the shrine giving out candy. Akamitsu later compliments Mia on her outfit, but she tells him that women would prefer him to be more direct. This leads to him very brazenly complimenting Yuzuki to her embarrassment. The two of them talk about the upcoming year and Yuzuki's mission to save her shrine. This reminds Akamitsu of the oath he made to her to do whatever he can to protect the shrine, and he goes to find Kagura. Meanwhile Kagura is praying for success in her plan, and she is slightly tired of spending many years trying to guide Mia to her family's seduction-based philosophy. She was actually behind the plan to get Mia to Japan which was supported by both their families, as long as Kagura records what happens on a video camera and takes a photo of Mia with at least 1,000 different men. When the two of them arrived in Japan, Kagura started to photoshop fake men onto pictures with Mia to fulfill her promise to their families, and her work has gotten easier with the arrival of Akamitsu, who seems to be cheering up Mia. Kagura's new plan is to make Akamitsu leave which would break Mia's heart and lead her down a dark path. 
Akamitsu arrives to confront Kagura at the temple, but he declines to leave the shrine which ruins her plans. She reminds him of his dire straits, from his massive debt to the shrine and the broken figure in the main hall that could jeopardize Yuzuki's test. But Akamitsu tells her that he will handle everything, and that he will earn the money himself. But when Akamitsu tells him that he is fulfilling his promise to Mia to support her against her family, this angers Kagura who tells him that he knows nothing about Mia. She starts to argue with him, but he tells her that she must actually care greatly for Mia which makes her angry enough to kick him and leave. Even though she battles with her own conflicting feelings between her friendship with Mia and her loyalty to her family duty. And this is all for this video, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.